Himarama 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 To the King who sits on the throne Himarama To the King Listen, let me tell you this. I will continue to teach you this secret. Real victory, real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep. Real victory is not gotten shouting around just making noise. Real men of power contact power when men sleep. May God give you the grace to rise above sleep. I'm praying from the... May God give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you. That God can wake you up in the night. No light. Off the light. You are praying. Don't allow distractions. You are praying the next thing. You see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract. Off the light. You can use your phone light. You are in the night alone. And watch what happens. You are nobody seeing what you are doing. But there is a register. Every day you are signing. It is the day you get to the stage to preach. That's when God will not disappoint you. Don't come on stage and talk nonsense. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Rose of this and that and that. God is not a scammer. He's not a magician. No track record in the secret place. You will flatter yourself to nothing in, it, in the open. Please learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Receive grace to dedicate night times and pray. God didn't give you a house just to keep things. Turn everywhere to a prayer altar. Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. A time will come, you'll feel like just leaning. Get up and say, Satan, you're a liar. I'm going far. A time will come, your tongues begin to change. What you are saying, it will never be what you started with. You, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit. Tongues are languages and they are levels of power contact. Groanings that cannot be uttered. You get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray. There are times that only one word, one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes. Pray for receiving power. Prayer is not something you do in a group so that people will see you and think you are a prayer warrior. Don't joke with your destiny like that. Don't joke with your destiny like that. The Bible says to enter and shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret. You don't need to have a prayer point. You don't need to have a prayer point. Just stay there and begin to pray. Sekas kaparakatos, embrekete keleka takatos, sikos kamanakata. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is winning.
Listen. Can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire is an emblem of the spirit. It's one of the emblems of revival. It's one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place. Fire does not only refine. Fire is for judgment. There are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch. My brother and my sister, if you pray from your heart, some things will shift. You will wake up in the morning and know I shifted this through prayer. There are attacks that only prayer can challenge. Pray for me, pray for me is wonderful. For you must become the priest of your destiny. Can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes? Salabakata. Senakandas kamahasabash. Rakata bakato sopokoto sheketelekata. Emprata seneketo shanikata. Tastete shanahas kabarato. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrong time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual reality. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and saw tears. Pray. Pray. Outside, pray. To the king who sits upon the white horse. To the king who sits upon the white horse. Shela bakatare kotosia. Imarama. Marama, to the king who sits on the throne. Marama, to the king who sits on the throne. War to them who are ease in Zion. War to them who are ease in Zion. To the king who sits upon the white horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. 
Psalm 125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise you would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, use the same strategy to strengthen. Strengthen. Prayer is a strengthener. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Next verse. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity. Next verse. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. We are reading till the last verse. As for such as turn aside in their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace upon Joshua Selman. Prayer gives you stability. In the next two, three minutes, you are going to pray. And say, Lord, let this prayer stabilize me. I shouldn't be shaking over everything. I should be able to laugh at certain storms. And say, Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Stability. Power. Stamina. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Sekato shalaha sibregetekatola. Stability, O oh God. Stability, O oh God. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Your strength is small. Give me capacity, endurance, stamina. The grace to pass through for the sake of my family. The grace to pass through for the sake of my generation. The grace to pass through. For the sake of my, my loved ones. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord. Koinonia, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord, be strong in the Lord. Don't entertain weakness. Be strong in the Lord. You are not the weak ones. You are strong. Hallelujah. The third key I will give you tonight. Number one, never lose your joy. Number two, engage in strategic prayer and intercession. Number three, prophesy the power of the spoken word there is no greater time in your life to engage the creative power of God's word than when things just go haywire the power of the spoken word the power of the spoken word Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers 14 Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as he have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. There are times that you don't just pray. You pray till the spirit of prophecy comes on you. When it does come, you speak. He said prophesy. Speak to the dry bones. Prophesy.
prophesy. All dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. Say, prophesy. There are times you need to prophesy. There are times you need to speak. Psalms 138 and verse 8. Very powerful scripture. Psalms 138 and verse 8. Please give it to us quickly. We are going to pray. The Lord will perfect that which concerned me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of my own hands. You lift it in prayer. I prophesy and I declare. The Lord is perfecting everything concerning me. I declare that I come out victorious. The Bible declares that goodness and mercy follow me. You don't just cry and say, hey, yeah, so is this how my life is going to be? This is what I've become now. No, sir. Nothing moves till you prophesy. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You see, that's why it is important for a believer to be full of God's word. If you are scripture bankrupt, you will not know what to say. Prophecy is not just when God reveals something like word of knowledge. You can take the word of God and begin to create possibilities. It's important to know the word. It's important to know the word. When it looks like things around you are not working, you go to Psalm 3. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they which say, where is your God? He says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. It's unfortunate for believers who don't know the word. You must trust God for grace to sit down and gather relevant scriptures that address the issue of concern and stand up like the priest that you are. Put those words in the lips of faith like Kenyon would say and begin to release them with true supernatural power. The Lord is my light and salvation. The Lord is my light and salvation. I reject confusion in my life. I hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk in it. This is how to pray. Is someone ready to pray? Listen to me. There are many of us who have gotten to the stage in our seasons where it is our prophecy that will bring the morning. If you don't prophesy, nothing will happen. Is someone ready to pray? If you don't know what to say, go and hold the hands of someone who knows what to say and agree with them. Lift your voice and begin to speak. There has to be a scripture that you know. It shall keep them in perfect peace. Whose minds are stayed towards him. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him from them all. From them all. From them all. And I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. It will give them beauty for ashes, joy for the spirit of mourning, that they might be called the oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord, and He shall be glorified. Behold, I do a new thing. Shall ye not know it? I make a way even in the wilderness, streams in the desert. The Lord shall perfect all that concerns me. All the days of my appointed time, I wait till my change comes. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, they were like them that dream. So said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for us. He said, the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. 
they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I am the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I shall lay up gold as dust, even the gold of Ophir. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings even to the brightness of my rising. For my shame I receive double. But my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, blessed in my going out, blessed in my coming in. Blessed is the work of my hand, my needing trough, in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his command. My seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in my house. And my righteousness endures forever. Pray. Pray. You are not just speaking, you are creating. Declare thou that ye might test be justified. For by your words you are justified. And by your words you are condemned. You are bringing before God your strong reasons. Above only. Above only. Above only. Above only. In the name of Jesus. Above only. Above only a sign and a wonder, a testament of the grace of God, a testament of the favor of God, a testament of the hand of God, a testament of the mercy of God. Though weeping endures for a night, joy comes to the morning. Prophesy joy in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 32, Genesis chapter 32, the Bible says, Jacob wrestled with God and he said, leave me for the day breaker. He says, I will not let you go unless, listen, unless you bless me. Here's how God blessed him. What is your name? What is your identity? What have people known you with? I'm about to change it. That's how I bless you. If I bless you truly, it means something they used to say about you. A proverb should no longer be heard. What is your name? And he said, Jacob, a cheat and a supplanter. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Why? For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. We are going to pray. Father, change my name. In this season, listen. Change my name means change my experience. Change my name means change the proverb. Let this proverb not be used about me again. That God cannot show him mercy. 
that God cannot lead my family. Let this proverb change. Like father, like son, no sir. Open your mouth and cry. Change my name. Change my story. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Jabez, the mother called him Jabez, named him in sorrow. But Jabez was angry. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Enlarge my coast. Is someone praying? Lord, change my financial name. Change my ministerial name. Change my marital name. Change my destiny name. Out of the abundance of your mercy. By the encounter I have had with you. Change my name. Change my story. Change my name. Give me a testimony. Shut the mouths of the wicked. Prove once again that you are God and that by yourself. Please pray. God answers prayer. Give me a new name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next prayer point. The Bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and it became twisted. Lord, may I never depend on my strength. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. And lean not on your own understanding. It says in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The next verse says, do not be wise in your own understanding, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. You are going to pray. Lord, I've trusted my certificate. I've trusted my connection. I've trusted my beauty. I've trusted my spirituality. But tonight I take my eyes away from all of this. As advantageous as they are, they looked unto him and their faces were lightened. I look to you and to you alone. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. We are praying. I take my eyes away from man. It is true that my blessings come through men. But my eyes are fixed on you. Is someone praying? We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh, keep praying, we look to Yahweh. Like the brazen serpent that Moses made. He said, whoever looks to that serpent, the real one will not strike at him. Vain is anything that you put your strength on. So Jacob, I see you stable without me. 
I touch your point of stability so that you will be ever dependent on me. The last prayer point. He said he blessed him. And the sun arose. Until then it was night. The war happened in the night. The weeping happened in the night. But then it says the sun arose. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. The face of God. It says for I have seen God face to face. When Moses saw the face of God. He returned back with a testimony. Is someone ready to pray? Lord let the sun arise. It is true that weeping endures for a night. But I believe I'm standing at the dawn of my morning. Lift your voice and prophesy. Let my son arise. Son arise. Financial son arise. Ministerial son arise. The encounter is over. The lessons have been learned. The impartations have been received. Therefore, night time, be turned today. Night time, be turned today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep standing. We're rounding up. Let me tell you three things that come into your life when you break through with God. Number one, strange dimensions of favor. There is, a, there is a, an unusual degree of favor. It's God's signature. He writes it upon your life that the training for this phase has come to an end. You have been approved. He uses favor. Dimensions of those you never dreamt opening. I can tell you this happens. It doesn't matter how the night is. That when your day breaks, you will see favor that will bring you to your knees. When I talk of favor, I'm not talking money. I'm talking of the hearts of kings and nobles. Money is very small. God will take the hearts of kings and nobles and give you. It will be like a charm. You will call on a man and nations will respond. You have become Beulah and Hephzibah. The delight. Number two. Genuine, authentic spiritual power. Genuine spiritual power. Not trial and error. Not like God will come. Not like God will move. Something solid upon you. Provable. Genuine spiritual power. You speak the purposes of God to men's lives. And you will shift lives overnight. Power. 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 Number three, the third thing that happens to you when you stand with God is that God multiplies both your spiritual and your physical influence. He increases the reach of the grace He has put upon your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every man is limited by the jurisdiction a portion for his grace to function. There are men who can stand from anywhere and speak over Nigeria. It doesn't matter. The grace given to them and the expansion they have attained unto in the spirit covers that sphere. Elijah stood in one place and spoke over an entire land. There were times when Jesus had to leave one land to enter another land to pray for a person. What was the reward 
of the five two and one talent greater territory greater influence in the spirit when kings conquered certain lands they had increased territory america is called america today because it's the unity of many states one american state can be three times nigeria one state are we together now yes it's why it's called united states of america in nigeria you can pass through a state in 30 minutes and there are times in the state you will fly for hours from one state to the other there is no state that is more than one hour 10 minutes my duguri to lagos is the farthest distance one hour 10 minutes exactly you are there but you will fly for hours that is the reason why whoever sits as the president of that territory must be respected by every devil whether they like it or not it is the reason why the american president is the number one president because there are many in one state is the destiny of many nations the per capita income of just one state will swallow up many african countries so when god expands your sphere dimensions where your grace would not reach now you can speak from one place and they can hear from home before you had to go home for them to hear but now god has expanded your influence and they say won't you come again he said no problem he has upgraded the grace for i am also a man under authority right from where i am i can say to one come and he cometh go and he goeth it's like a ranking in the spirit one of my old secondary school classmates my father got to meet with him recently and now he's a major in the army i think at the threshold of the next rank what's the next rank after, after major Lieutenant Colonel, yes. I think soon that's what they are going to give him. He used to be a fearful, chicken-like young guy. I remember when they take us from Joss to go to our school, he would start crying even before we go out of Joss. I never cried once to leave home. It was a delight and a pleasure to get out. That guy was so girlish and feminine. I wondered, but that guy today is a major sometimes he would stand and do some things you know he could see a roach cockroach and you know how ladies would jump but today he can tell me kneel down hands up you civilian except for the fact that when i sent thee lackest thou anything can we spend two minutes to pray? Let's pray the prayer of Jabez. Enlarge my territory. Please lift your voice and pray. Enlarge me, O God. Take away the spirit of smallness from my life. It doesn't give you glory that I remain small. Not after an encounter with you. Not after seasons, defining moments with you. Pray the prayer of Jabez. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. That thou wouldest expand, enlarge my territory. Pray for Koinonia. Pray for your business. Lord, enlarge my territory. He said, where we meet with you is too straight. Let us move beyond the Jordan. Please pray. God is hearing you. You are not wasting your time. It has been said no one rose beyond certain levels in your family. But can you pray the prayer of Jabez? Expand my territory, O oh God. I will go where the fathers have not gone.
I will eat the milk and the wine of Canaan. I will not die in the wilderness. He did not bring me from Egypt to leave me in the wilderness. There is a land that flows with milk and honey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. You don't have to come out. But I want to pray specially for people in this place tonight. You just sense in your life that there seems to be a fierce attack on your life. This is not just a dealing with God. This one you know is demonic. It's like all hell breaking loose over you, over your family, over your spiritual life, over whatever it is, your business. I want to pray for you and I want you to believe. It is for this cause that the Lord says to not neglect the gathering of the brethren because it's an opportunity for a supply of His power. Even when your seasons come to the end, there has to be a man. He said, destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. I want to pray for such people. Suddenly your prayer life just went down. You come fast from 6 to 6. By 11 you are almost collapsing. You can't even breathe. It's an attack. As a man of God, you found out that it looks like you opened the Bible and your page is empty. You are not seeing anything again. Every verse looks confusing. Every. Something is wrong. Strange attack on your church. Members are suddenly leaving. Everybody is suddenly hating you. People you have labored to raise in the gospel are now turning against you. It's an attack. You used to prophesy correctly. But now you just found out that you entered a season of nonsense. Everything you say is not correct. Word of knowledge, not correct. Your prophecy, not correct. It's an attack. It doesn't mean you are wrong. It means the devil is attacking your credibility. So that you will no longer be trusted. Finances. You are a hard-working, diligent person all of a sudden, it looked like holes came in your pocket. All doors just closed. No destiny help again. Even those who promised to help you, it's as if something turned their backs against you. It's an attack, my brothers and my sisters. You need to pray. All of a sudden, your children started becoming something else. People you have labored and trained. They now no longer listen to you. You say A, they say B. You say, keep quiet. They tell you to keep quiet. Something is wrong. Strange, devilish dreams. Nightmares. You can't dare lie down on your bed to sleep. Here they come. Pressing you. Molesting you. Attaching you. It will take the grace of God to struggle yourself to wake up. It's an attack. What of reports from home? You are enjoying the glory of God, just about to take a nice step. They just call you. They pay you some areas that you are trusting God to just use and buy a small land. And you hear an attack. That someone needs chemotherapy or, or whatever it is. And they need to spend thirty-five to 100000 every week. And it is you they are depending on. Say devourer. Say it again. Say devourer. That's a devourer. Because you don't do it. Everybody says you are a wicked young man who is allowing your father or mother to die. And you pay 70, 70,000 in, in five or six weeks. Your money is gone. There are many ways believers can be attacked. Can I pray for you? I don't know who is in that category. But I believe the Lord put this meeting tonight. You don't have to kneel. Just believe 
believe. Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. Father, you have anointed me for the sake of your people. And I bring before you, O oh God, the thousands of people in this place, thousands and millions others from around the world who are being fiercely attacked by the devil and his cohorts in an attempt to corrupt your testimony over their lives. I bring before you families that have been fiercely attacked, businesses fiercely attacked, destinies, marriages, spiritual lives, ministries, churches, and by that attack, your people have been discouraged. They have been exhausted and frustrated. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every spirit responsible for this attack by the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, we crush the works of darkness now. Yeah. Pay attention, I'm praying for you. I decree and declare that if this is as a result of territorial covenants, activities of ancestry that authorize darkness to launch attacks over lives, over churches, over ministries, over individuals, mysterious diseases that you had no part in i pray by the god of heaven tonight let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you i challenge suicidal spirits over this territory of zaria the spirit that caused young people to kill themselves and waste their lives in the name that is above all names. We command that spirit is banished from this territory. The spirit of discouragement, the spirit of exhaustion, in the name of Jesus, we declare be gone now and forever. He says, The Lord shall deliver you from six things, yea, seven things, and one of it is the scourging tongues of men. The scourging tongues. Pronouncements work, my brothers and my sisters. Some of you acted in a way and manner that out of anger, some men of God opened their mouths under the influence of the grace God gave them and they made utterances concerning your destiny. Like Elisha, some of you laughed at certain men of God and they made utterances and there are things devouring you you cannot explain. Listen. There are some of you, his parents, maybe be, before you now started to be serious with God, you talk nonsense to parents and they looked at you and said, may your children do the same thing for you. You would think they were just joking. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm, believe it or not. Whether you believe it or not, doesn't change that reality. The scourging tongues. Like a scourge. A scourge is a whip. A cane. That, that the mouth of a man can become a whip over a man's destiny.
it takes people to speak also over your life. There are some of you, maybe you were in certain churches and you ran your mouth against men of God, laboring in the spirit, either because of their weaknesses, because of their mistakes. You opened your mouth. Some of you maybe even insulted them directly. And like Noah, they got up from their sleep and cursed you and said, A servant of servants shall you be. He said, God forbid it will not happen, but it's happening and you are seeing it. Yes, the I remember a man who I think he said something against Bishop Oyedeko. And Bishop Oyedeko cursed him. And he, you know, laughed it over and believed it will not happen. And for the next few years of that man's life, things went down until he went for prayer. And a true prophet of God said, ah, I'm trying to bless you. And I'm seeing that that blessing is not coming. Something you have offended a man of God. He said to go and if you can't apologize to him. You may not have time to do all of that. But that prayers need to be offered. Otherwise you will be surprised how long that thing will remain on your head. There are things in your life that should not go wrong. Something is making it go wrong. Exactly what the blessing does is what a cause does in the negative. Hallelujah. The anointing is two-sided. It blesses and it judges. I want to pray for you. Because I believe that sometimes this our generation need the prayer of mercy. We have abused and insulted men of God. Some of us with the young revelations we have, we have insulted every father of faith. Called them all kinds of names. Insulted our reverence in the Orthodox churches, our priests in our Catholic churches, you know, Presbyterian churches, just because we are filled with the Holy Ghost. We laughed at them in sarcasm and made nonsense statements. And God had it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray again. The Bible declares that a curse causeless shall not stand. But the Bible also declares that your mercy overrides judgment. I stand, O oh God, by the privilege of your grace. And I stand in advocacy for your people. That in any way we have become victims of the scourging tongues of men. Let the mercy of God, let the blood of Jesus that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Tonight let it speak on behalf of our lives. Let it speak on behalf of our families. Let it speak on behalf of our businesses. Let it speak on behalf of our ministries. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Therefore I decree and declare that any pronouncement on the life of anyone causing destruction by the blood of the eternal covenant from today, let it be lifted from off your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lastly, let me pray for those who it is not an attack from the devil. There are just seasons you are passing through that is refining you to be as gold. Father, I pray you are not careful when it comes to making men you have standards that cannot be bent. And Lord, some of these standards, we, we admit that in our humanity, they are hard. They are standards that will stretch us from every dimension. Therefore, Lord, for the sake of your people, listening, following from around the world, and even here, who are passing through seasons of pruning and training and building, let grace be supplied tonight. Let strength be supplied tonight. Let hope be supplied tonight. I decree and declare like a faithful soldier, you will pass through it and emerge as gold. That out of this season of training will come great anointings, great ministries, 
great destinies. Let the character God seeks to birth, let it be birthed. Let the discipline God seeks to birth, let it be birthed. Let the spirituality God seeks to birth, let it be birthed. Let the endurance God seeks to birth, let it be birthed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stamina for you to endure the mockery of men. Stamina for you to endure the sacrifices you will have to make. And I declare that at the end of it, God will write his signature upon your life. You will be a possessor of something divine. Something powerful. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for tonight's teaching. That as simple as it came, we place an anointing upon it. Let it minister to your people at the point and the seasons that they will need it. In the name of Jesus. Particularly to your precious people in this ministry. In the name of Jesus, there will be testimonies of the wonder walking. Sing the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Let us go on to perfection. That means there is a higher dimension. Thank God for the things we have studied. Thank God for the fact that, oh, you are this and that. Thank God for these foundational things. But Paul is saying, if we remain at this level, the sophistication of the realm of the spirit requires that there is progressive growth in understanding. If we must be ambassadors, there are people sick with cancer. Men of God have prayed and prayed and prayed. The people have died. There are people with HIV. Headaches have been healed. We have risen people from wheelchair. But why is it that some sicknesses seem to bow? There are laws we need to learn. Otherwise, those people will never be healed. Hallelujah. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation. Everybody say foundation. Amazing that most of, most of the teachings we brag about in the church and call Rema, the Bible calls it foundation. Foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, verse 2. And of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands. Power! The Bible says it is even, even that realm. Laying on of hands that we believe is the crux of success in ministry. The Bible says it is a foundation. And of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Verse 3. And this is our prayer this night. And this we will do if God permits. Hallelujah. So I'd like you to pray right now in one minute and say, Lord, I refuse to remain at the level of knowledge that I've had. I contend for higher levels of revelation. There is a generation waiting for me. My family members are counting on the revelation I will get tonight. The devil is destroying people. There are territories that are dying. And if we do not contend, there are churches that will pack up and die for nothing. If we do not step in in these dimensions of spiritual understanding to know when to launch attack on the works of darkness and establish what Christ has done. Pray from the depths of your heart. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. Tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. Got to be more. There's got to be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things. And we press in need. Gotta be more, gotta be more. Help me say, gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are the desperate people. We want more, more. Lord, we are tired of the status quo.
who should not die. We are tired of watching our families run away to herbalists as though the word of God is a lie. We are in this series. We are exploring to find answers. What is the answer, oh God? Why we have prayed and fasted about issues and it has not changed? Why am I still being pressed in the night although I'm born again? Why is it that I'm tightening? I'm giving and the doors are not opening. Can you pray for one minute? We're tired of the status quo There's gotta be more than this We're tired of the status quo There's gotta be more than this There's gotta be more, gotta be more There's gotta be more than this There's gotta be more, gotta be more Gotta be more than this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. My spirit is fired up this night. Hallelujah. The first thing I want you to know tonight, brothers and sisters, is that we live in a world that is controlled from the realm of the spirit. Never forget this for as long as you live. I began that teaching in the teaching, Give Me This Mountain. I began to explain to us the spiritual dimension of life. Life is everything spiritual. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It says, For by it the elders obtain a good report. The Bible says, Through faith we understand that the walls not one. The walls, systems were made. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? I need you to know that the realm of the spirit is real. Whether you are an atheist, whether you are whatever, is irrelevant. There is a real realm that birthed this physical realm. That realm was in existence before Genesis 1 verse 1. The real spiritual realm with inhabitants. Praise the Lord. There are realms beyond that which the mortal eyes of man can physically see. That they are not seen does not mean they do not exist. Ephesians chapter 6. Generally, theologically speaking, the book of Ephesians is considered by theologians to contain the highest spiritual truth that um, summarizes the entire scope of the activities of men. Hallelujah. From chapter 1 to chapter 3 in the book of Ephesians it tells us how and, and brings us to the understanding of our rights and privileges in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Reminds us that we are seated with Christ. The realities of redemption the things that have been wrought for us on account of what Christ has done. Hallelujah. And so it lets us see that the entire journey of the believer is hinged upon the platform of Christ's finished work. That is on account of his death, his burial and his resurrection that any other thing that will happen in the kingdom will happen. So, chapter 1, 2, and 3 helps us to expand. Paul tells us how that by revelation he understood this. That we have been raised up with Christ. Hallelujah. And then chapter 4 and 5 begins to tell us how that um, it begins to explain to us, you know, our walk as a believer. Our character, how to live in the reality of what Christ died to give us. So our walk, chapter 1 to 3 tells us about our sitting with Christ. And then chapter 4 and 5 tells us about our walking. Then chapter 3 tells us how to stand. It begins to tell us that although chapter 1 to 3 has already established the fact that all things have been brought under the feet of Jesus. But there is an enemy. There is an adversity. And because of that, we have to be trained to stand. Hallelujah. The psalmist 
prophetically speaking about that he said blessed is the man who does not walk in the way of sinners walk nor sit in the seat of the scornful nor stand so there is walking sitting standing these are three prophetic postures in the spirit unfortunately most people just know how to sit hallelujah are you following me now chapter 6 verse 12 Chapter 6, verse 12. The reality of the realm of the spirit. You don't need to have a vision or a trance to be convinced that there is a realm beyond that which you see. Hallelujah. Can we start from verse 11, please? Verse 11. It says, put on the whole armor of God. Question. The same Paul that revealed to us in the Pauline epistles the revelation of our seated position with Christ now begins to admonish us. He said, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to what? Stand. Why will Paul say stand? Whereas he said we are already seated in heavenly places. Paul said we have been exalted far above thrones and dominions and every name that is named. Not just in this age, but in the world to come. Now he's saying stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12. For we wrestle. Uh -uh. What are you saying again, Paul? We are seated in a position of rest. Now you are talking of wrestling. It is didn't say for we argue. He said, for we wrestle, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. See how many times the Bible says against. It didn't say for, against, 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 against. This is a contention. Look, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. This world is not a playground. Don't let films deceive you. Whether you believe it or not, there is a rude reality that every man born by a woman must face, especially in this day and age. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, where? Where is the location called high places? Stop. Help me. Use your Google map to show me a location called high places. Where do we find it? But the Bible says, there are planes in the spirit called high places. Where is it located? Geography students, scholars and intellectuals, help us. Where is the spiritual location called high places? Other versions say heavenly places. I told you, there are heavens and there is heaven. The Bible says the heaven of heavens. That means there are other heavens. We discussed that already. I don't want to go into it. The reality of heaven and hell, we touched that. Many people have gone to all of those astral realms and come back and told us they went to heaven. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There is a real realm, brothers and sisters. There are astral realms. There are people who live in this earth who travel there and come back. They go to get power they go to get wealth, real spiritual realms. By the grace of God, I've had the opportunity to minister to probably thousands of people. So I can tell you from the truth of God's word and from experience. There is a real realm. Are you listening to me? There is a real solid realm. The Bible calls Satan that old where was he living before Adam came? Because the Bible does not tell us he's young. He said that old serpent. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everybody said the realm of the spirit is real. I want you to also know that the realm of the spirit is not heaven. The realm of the spirit has all, there are demonic realms, demonic dimensions in the spirit. So if you are caught up in the realm of the spirit, you will just believe that you will see streets of gold. No, sir. You will see a real atmosphere like this. It's just that it is not solid and material. And it is not bounded by three dimensions. I have been there. It is not drama that I read from a book. 
in the realm of the spirit, there is no time and there is no distance. The concept of time and distance is the concept of physics. Isaac Newton developed it in mechanics to help people relate with the things. A process. But in the realm of the spirit, it does not exist. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. At once. At once. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing? Please do. Hallelujah. Another strange location. Although we use it prophetically as anywhere the believers are. Where is Mount Zion? Because the Bible says, ye are come to Mount Zion. That means you can come. Where is the location of Mount Zion? I'm not talking of geographical Mount Zion. Hallelujah. There have been many findings in our world today that the world has not been able to offer sufficient explanation. One of it is the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. Many people have been able to seek all kinds of explanation. Why is it that there is an intense magnetic field around that region that will wipe away everything at once, no matter how heavy it is? What is it about this strange thing? What is it about tornadoes and hurricanes that sweep across nations? How can a wind remove blocks and kill people? The spirit realm is real. Brothers and sisters, is as real as this realm. As we are in this meeting right now, there are angels in this place. There are a lot of angels. The angels that have been sent to guard you because every child of God has angels. Once you are born again and you are in Christ, as a matter of fact, even when you are not born again, there are angels. Hallelujah. There are angels. I can prove that to you from scripture. Remember the Bible says when Peter was bound, the Bible says the apostles were praying. Is that true? When they were praying, the Bible says an angel came and took him out of the first um, barricade, second, third, and led him. When he came and knocked the door, they opened the door. They said they thought it was his angel and they closed it back. So we have angels. Second proof, are they not ministering spirits? Send to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation. And the Bible says we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So there are angels. There are also demon spirits. Yes, they are listening to me right now as I'm talking to you. The unfortunate thing is that many of them could not come this far. Because there is always a wall of fire that surrounds the people of God. I'm opening you up to the realm of the spirit. So that you begin to walk with this consciousness. I never walk alone. Never ever walk alone. There are special angels that follow us when we are going for certain ministrations. They are angels that guard revelations. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says he sent it and signified it by his angel. There are angels that guard the safe delivery of revelations. I am come to give thee Daniel understanding. There are angels that are signed. There are different strata and levels of angels. There are ministering spirits. This caliber of angels walk among men. They walk among men. There is the northern army of God. There are all kinds and varieties. There are seraphs. There are cherubims. There are messenger angels. Different strata of angels. There are not just angels like that. Satan was one of those cherubs. Let me surprise you. The opposite of God is not Satan. Don't insult God. The opposite of God is not Satan. In scripture, God weighed Satan and put angel Michael to handle him. It cannot be God. Twice there was an encounter. One, the mystery in heaven that was shown. Are you listening to me? From the foundations of time. The war in heaven. Michael took care of Satan. The second encounter was during taking the body of Moses. Satan came to claim the body. And Michael said again, the Lord rebuke you. And 
in the end time, in the, in the last battle, the Bible says that Michael will be released again. Mm. Hallelujah. And so there are different structures. There is an organogram of angels. There are angels that are in charge of praise and worship. There are angels that are in charge of prayer. They take the prayers of God upon files. All these things are in scripture. I'm not talking about the angelic realm. I just want to open you up to the reality of the spirit realm. When you are still in, there are demons watching you. Hello? There are angels watching you. That is the reason why Satan has been able to give himself a name called the accuser. Why is he the accuser? He has a vast army station that monitor the activities of believers part time. Are you aware of that? Praise the Lord. So the realm of the spirit is real. There are four substances that were borrowed from the realm of the spirit into this realm. This is why science cannot fully understand them. Number one, light. Light is not just a physical substance. Light is a spiritual substance. This is the reason why quantum physics is very difficult. It's an attempt to open people up to a realm that is not three-dimensional. Don't blame yourself when people say you are not good in quantum, although read, but I'm just telling you, it's not child's play. Hallelujah. Number two, fire. Everybody look at me. What is this terrible thing called fire? You cannot hold it, yet it is not threatened by anything. You can't box it. You can't put it in a box and wrap it. It will burn everything. Yet, it does not have any force that you can see, but it consumes. These are spiritual realities. Number three, water. This thing called water. Strange. Number four, wind. You can't catch it. But the effect is undeniable. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? And then you understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you understand that the Lord is here. So everybody said the realm of the spirit is real. The psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through a valley called the shadow of death. Who told the psalmist it was a valley and not a mountain of the shadow of death? How did the psalmist see it? The psalmist said, he will give you a garment called praise. So praise is not just what you sing. It's a garment in the realm of the spirit. You can wear it. Hallelujah. The realm of the spirit is an exciting realm. The last thing I want to talk about. Oh, I said four things, five. There is the fifth one. Words. Words. Dangerous spiritual mysteries that defy physical explanation. Words have sent nations to war because somebody, somebody spoke. The earth was created with a word. It will be destroyed with a word. What is it about words? The words that I speak, they are spirit and life. Look at me. I said it here. Let me say it again. During the time of the apostles, they didn't have this. I hope you know. What did they call their word of God? Because it was their experience today we call the word of God. So whenever they said the word is quick and powerful, what did they refer to? There needs to be a redefinition in the body of Christ. I believe this, of course. This I, I'm not against this at all. Hallelujah. The reality of the realm of the spirit. 
heavenly places. There are planes. There are dimensions in the realm of the spirit. Another thing I want to tell you is that there are portals from the earth realm that physically open people out to the realm of the spirit. This will shock some of you. Did you hear what I said? There are what? Portals. Look at me please. There are physical portals. It is geography that told us the earth is round or good or what's the shape. I want to tell you that there are portals that physically open men out of this realm. I'll prove it to you from scripture. The Bible tells us, listen, the Bible tells us, listen please, that when the nation of Israel were asked to choose whether they were standing for God or not, the Bible says the ground opened. Is that true? Swallowed all of them at once and closed back as if nothing happened. Question, is the ground a living thing? Who asked it to open? Swallow them and close back up. Jacob got to a prophetic portal and he said, this is the gate of heaven. It wasn't just a vision. He said, where I am standing, I'm standing the gates of heaven. When Elijah was going to check out of the earth, he knew the exact place where there was a physical portal that would take him out of the earth. Beyond the Jordan, he said, Elijah, ask your request quickly because very soon you will see chariots come to take me. And immediately he looked, he saw chariots that came and picked his physical body out of the earth realm. When Jesus was about to go to heaven, in Acts chapter 1, he knew the exact place to stay and he started levitating till he disappeared. Where are these portals? Ruth Heflin, one great woman that walked with the Lord, said a bit about this, but there was a woman called an around tree. An around tree was with Jesus every day of 2005. Every day. And she said that the Lord Jesus told her that there are 15 portals. 15 that open people up. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm just browsing through it because we we'll have to do a lot of studies. She, them, she showed all of them. There is a book within you know, the priestly bride and the heavens open. It's, you may not be able to get it except in PDF formats. But I just want you to know that there are realms. Hallelujah. There are realms. The third thing I want you to know is that spirit beings can materialize themselves and manifest in this realm. Are you getting me? Human beings cannot do that. But because the realm of the spirit is higher, human beings, I mean spirit beings, can materialize themselves and come into this earth realm. We are not alone. We've spoken about it, right? The mystery of the aliens. We explained it. Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, how that the world grew wickedly. Is that true? Is that in your Bible? And the Bible says the sons of God. I told you that word son of God is not technon or wheels of God. It was just a name. Demonic forces, spirit beings, superhuman people. The Bible says they came and they slept with the daughters of men. Is that true? And they gave birth to an aberration. Half man, half human being. We call them giants. Nephilims. They are still alive till today. And the Bible says, before the coming of Christ, it will be like the days of Noah again. That means there will be a repetition of that event. It's already happening. The unidentified flying objects, UFOs. Hello planet Earth. I shall not die. You better know what you need to know to live. Otherwise it will be a hateful time of life. I have a documentary. I have a documentary where people were digging into the earth realm. When they were digging, they found a place that could take 20,000 people below the earth and it was made by aliens. I have a documentary where these aliens have had meetings with United States presidents right from 1914s. They are alive. They are around. They are in the earth. Let CNN fool you. Let me tell you, when the church is raptured, this book will become a rebestseller again. Because every historian will buy it to try to understand. Everything this Bible said will come to pass. Every. Hallelujah. There are many realms. 
The dream realm is the realm of the spirit. Your dream realm is a real realm in the spirit. It's not those psychosomatic, psycho whatever, you know, uh, subconscious, all this. Anything that is not physical is spiritual. Period. Hallelujah. God came to Solomon in a dream. Was it, was it a mirage? It was a real solid experience. Joseph had an encounter not to leave Mary in a dream. A dream realm is a real realm. That's why somebody can have something in a dream and wake up physically. Is that true? Have you seen people sleep and they flood them and they woke up with physical marks all over there? Have you seen that happen? So how did that happen? Thank you, Jesus. The second thing I want you to know is that Satan is real. Everybody said, one to go. Satan is real. Listen, one of the things that secular humanism is promoting in the Western world and is creeping gradually into Africa is that Satan is trying to convince men using the tool of intellectualism that he does not exist. So people now teach, even men of God in church, they say the only devil that is there is your inner mind. Have you had those kind of psychopathic, devilish Christian science teachings? The only devil is the one in your mind. And if you can shift your mind away, you bring out your limited you. Ah, be careful, oh. Be very careful. Some of those teachings, the Bible says, in the latter days, men will give themselves to deceptive spirits. Different demons have appeared to people and brought all kinds of theology that we promote in the body of Christ right now. Satan is real. Satan is not a mirage. Satan is not one bull with horns as Freemasons tell us. Or the one you see in Tom and Jerry. Or all of those cartoons. Let me tell you the truth. Satan is real. Everybody say it. Satan is real. Demons are real. Say it. And wickedness is real. Satan is real. The Bible says when the sons of God came to meet with God, Satan was part of, their, of them. A real person. And God looked at him and said, Ah, oh boy, where are you coming from? He said, going to and fro. He's a living thing. He's not a flower. Satan is not fire. He's a living thing. He can move. Only God knows how many times he has passed your street. <laughs> not demons. The real Satan himself. Hallelujah. I also want you to know that there are three qualities that make Satan not to be like God. Or there are three qualities that will test everything and put God in a position where he is alone. Number one, omniscience. Omniscience is the ability to know all things. Satan does not know all things. Please Get this straight to your mind. Satan does not know all things. For instance, what you will become. Satan does not know. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear. He said, eye has not seen. Any kind of eye, it has not seen. Nor ear heard. There are ways in the realm of the spirit that Satan can peep and have an idea. This is what soothsayers and diviners and necromancers, they can use stargazing and astrology to predict certain things. And wow people and perform magic like the Egyptian magicians. Hallelujah. Satan is real. Demons are real. Wickedness is real. Satan is not omniscient. He does not know all things. If he knew all things, he would have known where Moses was hiding and not waste time killing everybody. If he knew all things, he would have gone to kill Jesus at once. His trial and error. See, do you know why Satan killed Cain? I've told you. There was a prophecy in the Garden of Eden. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Eve gives birth to Cain. And Satan thought that Cain is the seed of the woman. So he came and entered Cain. Then he was shocked. And when he found out that they gave birth to another child, he said, Cain, kill Abel in case Abel is the seed of the woman. Are you seeing that? 
When Moses was born, Satan thought Moses was the seed of the woman. Then he missed it again. He kept, that's why when John the Baptist was born and he began to manifest, he moved through the scribes to ask him, are you the Messiah? In other words, let's verify. And Moses, I mean, Elijah, um, John the Baptist kept confusing them. He said, I'm a voice. They said, go confuse us. Who are you? We want to kill you. That's why Herodias asked for his head. What will you do with the head of the man? That's why when Jesus said, all right, I'm not hiding it again. I am. They started following him till he died. So it was a plan. Satan killed. I mean, Jesus allowed Satan through people to kill him. And I will tell you why. It's still a law in the realm of the spirit. If you kill a man, the person's blood is permitted to haunt you for life. We'll talk about that. Don't worry. John 8 44. Who is Satan? Who is this guy called Satan that has threatened people? When you are going home alone, you just are hearing sounds that you shouldn't hear because you are afraid. There is Satan. If you watch a Nigerian film, we watched one fearful film years ago called, uh, what they call it, Ultimate Power. Ha! That film was not very encouraging. Hallelujah. He says, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He said he was a murderer from the beginning. Ah, ah. That's a terrible description. That means there is a story we don't know. Where is the story that brought Satan as a murderer? There are hidden stories enshrined. So Jesus was saying, I know this guy, yo. There are lots of stories you don't know. You just know Genesis from 1 verse 2. There is a lot more. Even part of his archives was that he was once a murderer. When did this happen? From the beginning. And he abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. He said when he speaketh, he speaketh a lie of his own. He said for he's a liar. And the originator of all them that lie. The word lie there is not just negating the truth. It's deception. Satan is a deceiver. His, his character is to deceive. He deceived the whole world. The badge of Satan is deception. What is deception? To make men err from the truth. It says he err not knowing the scriptures. Deception. So every time the spirit of the Antichrist is manifesting in a place, there is deception. I spoke about that prophetic insight into God's agenda. You can get the teaching. Deception. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Revelations 12 verse verse 9. Revelations 12, I believe verse 9. Let's turn there quickly. It Or verse 7. Let's start from verse 7. It gives us another history that many of you may have not paid attention to. And there was war in... Why will there not be war on earth? When even in heaven, there was war. Is that in your Bible? Heaven, there was war. Michael and his angels fought against who? The dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels. This was Satan. And prevailed not. Neither was there found a place for him in heaven. This was the judgment before Genesis 1 verse 2. Listen. The Bible says in Genesis 1 1. It says in the beginning. The beginning of beginnings. Deathless past. It says God created the heavens and the earth. We don't know how long that was. No historian can know. Are you following me now? Then between Genesis 1 verse 1. And Genesis 1 verse 2. Was millions and probably billions of years. Are you following me now? This story is sandwiched between Genesis 1 verse 1 and 1 verse 2. There was a lot of things that happened. And the Bible says Lucifer was cast down. That was It was the judgment that led to the chaos in Genesis 1 verse 2. Are you getting me now? Now the earth, after that judgment, was void. There was water. There was darkness. And then God was going to recreate the earth. What happened in Genesis 1 verse 3 was a recreation. That's why Elohim said, the first thing he said was, let there be light. The light there was not sunlight. Because 
a few verses later, he made two great lights. One to rule the day. So the light there was not sunlight. To know more about that light, you go to John 1. He said, in him was light. And that light was the light of man. So that light is the quality of his person that sponsors creation. Let there be light. Hallelujah. It says, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Aha, uh -huh, you see now. So this serpent story is not a, it's a very old story. Are you getting me? This issue of serpent. Are you seeing why you see things around snakes? Snakes, 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 deliverance with snakes. Serpent. He said, I have given you power to tread upon serpents. What was Jesus saying? Couldn't he just say to tread upon the devil? Why did he use the word serpent? I will tell you. He said, Satan, which deceived what? Look at how crafty Satan is. The Bible says, Satan, it is within his craftiness to deceive the whole world. He was cast into the earth. And the angels cast with him. Deceives the whole world. He deceives the whole world. He accuses the brethren, the Bible says. Day and night. It was Satan. Listen. It was Satan who went and God was speaking to him. He said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, of course. Uh -uh. After going to and fro the earth. I must have seen Job. He said, did you cover him for nothing? Take away the barricade. Give me permission. That's another law in the realm of the spirit we are going to talk about. Satan confessed that he could not touch a man. Satan testified before God that it was impossible for him to touch a man. Do you know there are men Satan does not touch today? Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and will not find nothing of himself. When, see, listen, when Jesus became man, remember the Bible tells us Satan is the God of this world. The God of the system, cosmos, not the earth, cosmos, the system. Hallelujah. That was why Satan looked at Jesus. Come, this, this is what he did to Jesus in the temptation. The Bible says, when he came and met him, he said, turn this stone to bread. Jesus didn't shout at Satan. Why? And then he said, follow me. And Jesus was following Satan. He took him to a mountain. And showed him the kingdoms. How can Satan drag Jesus and Jesus will just follow like this? I will tell you why. Because Satan was the legal occupant of the earth. He collected the keys from Adam. And until then the keys had not been collected yet. So he could brag. He said, Jesus, I know you came to collect this key. Let's negotiate. Bow, let me just give you. Must you go to the cross? If Jesus didn't go to the cross, there will be no blood. Satan would have collected it back from man. So Jesus said, no. I have to go through a process. Blood must speak. Satan was wise. Listen, if, if Jesus gave him the key, Satan would have laughed. Later on, he would have collected it back from man because there was no blood. <laughs> it's the same deceit that he did for Cain. Cain sacrificed and refused to put blood. And so his sacrifice was not accepted. Because Satan was afraid. Let the sacrifice of Cain not be accepted. Paradventure, he is the seed that will bruise him. So he deceived him. Why this waste? Give yourself short cut. Just use vegetables. And Abel, there was blood on his sacrifice and he reached the heavens. When Elijah was going to call on God, he said, get me blood first. Without blood, I cannot call on God. I will explain to you why every time they kill in this country, people become richer. The mystery of blood money. Every money in the earth is blood money. Whether it's the blood of Jesus or the blood of demons. There is blood that sponsors everything. Listen. Wherever we can stop tonight, we'll stop. John 10.10 10. The Bible says, The thief, another name for him. The devil is very hard working. Look at the names he earned for himself. By trying different methods. It's his methodology that gave him these names. Another name now we are seeing. The thief. The dragon was not enough for him. The deceiver. The accuser. Now he has earned himself another name. The thief. 
The thief cometh not. That means you will never see Satan except to do this. To steal, to kill, to destroy. Everybody say to steal. Say to kill. Say to destroy. So if anybody fools you that the devil doesn't have any plans for your life or your family, let me shock you now. Get out of that deceit quick before it gets too late. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan pursued Jesus from birth till he went to heaven. From birth till he went to heaven. Is that true? Satan was, he paid people to say Jesus was not alive. He's still paying people today. Paying Channel O, paying MTV, paying his envoys. Remember our teaching last week? Envoys of his presence. Satan also has envoys. He's a deceiver. He's the arch enemy of the church. Satan is the arch enemy of the church. What is his purpose? Look at me. If, if this is where I stop, this night is alright. I must let you, let's uncover this Satan puzzle. Look at me everybody. Why is Satan desperate to destroy man? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Why wouldn't it, there are people who used to say, why wouldn't the devil let me go? Let me go now, eh? Let my family go. The devil is saying, you have not seen anything yet. If you know what I suffered before you were born, you do, I don't plan to leave you until I... See, many of you don't know how old Satan is. Satan tried Moses. He tried everybody. He didn't leave them. They forced him to leave them. So you, you just come in the middle of history. And believe because you just said, oh, I'm born again. The devil said, okay, let's concentrate on others. You think so? The angrier he gets, he gets angry by the day because his time is short. He's more determined over our generation than any other generation. Listen, I want to tell you something. From the 70s down to the 90s, Satan had been plotting a dangerous arsenal against the American church. He deceived them into believing that when you are born again, that's all. They taught it and they transferred it to us. Look at what is happening to America now because of that gospel. Who would have known that a man would look at another man and wants to sleep with him? Even a preacher. Look at it was happening behind the scene while they were just telling themselves everything is okay. The devil is saying, time, I am patient. I can be patient for a whole generation. He kept mapping his strategy. Right now, they are removing the commandments. They are doing everything. People are occupying positions. And he's coming to Africa softly. And God is raising people. Say, Joshua Selman, arise. You are this horn. And Koinonia, arise. Yes! Because if we keep allowing this incomplete gospel to fool us, one day, a day will come catastrophe will happen again in Nigeria. Maybe we'll start sleeping with animals. But there are carpenters that will not bow. Look at what has happened to America, brothers and sisters. This was a place I was discussing with somebody. I said, where are the people who carried the mantles of Smith Wigglesworth? Where are they? they were, do you know Satan made sure a generation did not take the mantle? While these guys were preaching, Satan was busy taking... He started destroying these people from a tender age. And right now, Cartoon Network, all of these many networks, I'm not saying they are bad, but I'm saying there is another conspiracy to destroy young people. Satan can be patient even if he's 50 years. Right now, they will show sex in a cartoon and do something, something that was for entertainment and children are watching and the parents say they are small. Hold on. Very soon, you will see them get up one day and you will see the drama that begins to happen. You will see police with your son. Where is he coming from? He went to sleep with somebody. They say, oh yeah, let's go to the prison. That's when you will know that there is drama. You say, you? 12 years. 12 years. What do you know about this? I watched it somewhere. Or you will catch, look at all the people that are terrorizing the country. Which old man has the strength to carry God? Who doesn't like his life like that in his old age after suffering he wants to enjoy the remaining one decade or two de decades young people because i'm sorry to say this and i have a lot of honor for our father but their eyes are becoming dim like elijah and, and, and like eli and it's money that is making that eyes become dim 
So they are concentrating on building a lot of empires. And therefore, right now, many churches do not have respect for the youth. There are many churches that don't even have provision for Sunday school again. Is that true? And they think it is not necessary. Young people in many churches don't have a place again. The elders come with their philosophy. This little boy now, no provision for him. So he will get up with a godless mindset. They just leave them to be playing outside. As if demons cannot enter them. When you say anything, they say, please, don't be fanatical. It's children. Until the day the child says, I am the one that tied the father's head. The, the father will look at the child. Six years old, he say, yes, I'm the one that tied your head. This is what is happening around. This is what is happening around. Don't laugh. I counsel people all the time. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Wake up tonight. The weapons of our warfare. is a deceiver. The arch enemy of the church. Let me round up quickly by telling us what the agenda of Satan is. Satan is very visionary. He's not just trying to chase people up and down. Hallelujah. Listen. I want to tell you something. The devil is not interested in frivolities. There is a reason why he wants to get people down. Three reasons. Number one, Satan is on a revenge mission. You must understand this. Everybody say revenge mission. Have you watched films that they came and destroyed the actor's people and they thought they were dead and the actor said, I must revenge. All these Chinese films, Satan is on his own Chinese film. He has been doing it since and he will not give up. This, you see this story we just read in Revelation? That thing stung the ego of Satan. God didn't even fight. It was Michael that arranged him. They sent him to the earth. And Satan had been angry. Now guess what? What was Satan's annoyance? Listen. Satan was the value cherub that covereth. Are you getting me? Because the angels of God excel in strength. Why do they excel in strength? Because they are standing in the presence of God. And because God is ever changing. They are a reflection of his ever changing nature. So Satan being the closest cherub to God. Got to a point where he was an embodiment of all. Even other angels. Listen. Satan had the power to discipline other angels. That's what the lake of fire was created for. The, I've told you this. The lake of fire is not hell. Remember. I prove to you from scripture that hell, death, and the grave will be cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. It had been there. It had been there. There's no time I would have shown you from the word of God. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Oh, it has been there, yes. They are not just creating it. They are finished sins. That was the reason why when Satan conspired and he was, what did he want? He wanted to exalt himself and carry the nature of God. He had the likeness of God. The angels have the likeness of God. That's why they excel in strength, the brightness of his glory. Are you getting me? God has two hands. Angels have two hands, not three. Are you getting me? If you see one with three, be careful. Be very careful. Hallelujah. So that's his likeness. But Satan wanted the image of God. That quality that can make him to begin to legislate like God. And God said, uh uh, you have gone too far. And he cast him down. And guess what? He created man and now gave man the prayer request of Satan. You get the point? God now gave us that. Satan was watching. When God said, let them have dominion. Satan said, what? This is what you threw me down for. It's unfair. It, that's why occultists tell you that God was unfair to Satan. This is the unfairness. They say, how can God refuse to? He punished Satan for wanting something and gave man who did not ask for it. That's why I say, what manner of love? You see it? What manner of love? So Satan said, no way. This is a mockery to my personality. God will mold clay. You know how angels were made? Angels were not made from sand. Angels were made. How many of you have seen lightning? Lightning. That is the material of their creation. The least angel was made from that light. So Satan watched God mold clay. He weaks, he uses the weak things. Are you getting me now? So he used clay and put his image and Satan said, come on. No, no way. We are going to fight against this. So that anger 
is what Satan still has towards you. You gave your life to Christ and you believe Satan is your friend. Now, with all this story I've told you, do you think he wants to leave you? Hallelujah. This is that old story. So Satan came to Adam. Listen, why did he come to Adam? He came to Adam because he saw God giving him the keys. God gave him the keys. And he knew that through reproduction, he was going to reproduce people after his kind, who are after the kind of God. And they will intimidate Satan again. Satan cannot stand seeing people with the image of God. They, how many of you, let me, let's, let's be very honest. Brothers will understand this. Brother, you like a particular lady. You don't know what to do about it. The thing is eating you. Then somebody that you feel is not up to you will just come and meet her. And then the lady will be dying for the person. You get that pain, multiply it times infinity. That's what Satan is feeling today. Because the church is the bride of Christ. You see that pain. So every time I stand, mortal clay, I say, let it be. And it becomes, Satan is annoyed. How can clay, clay, the psalmist say, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Did you not see angels that you could make men? What is man that thou art mindful of him? Not the son of man that thou visitest him some age. He said, you have made him a little lower than Elohim. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. This is how special you are. If you understand this, you will not let any man drag your life in a mud. It took God a lot to make you what you are. That's a permanent cure for inferiority. Just see the effort God made to birth you. See how many angels would have taken your place. They all stood hoping and God said, I have another plan. It's not one of you. He started molding clay and breathed into that clay and called it Adam. Even when man fell, God went out of his way to start pursuing man. He pained Satan again. Ha! I fell once. You punish me. Man has fallen many times. You are still looking for him. This is injustice. You see it? You see what pain Satan. So he came and met Joshua the high priest and said, God, I'm coming to accuse. This guy is a priest. He's coming. You punish me for falling. Now look at this man. And God said, I just love him. Case closed. I am God. I can veto anything. Jacob have I loved. Israel have I hated. Why will I not love him with all my heart? This is not an issue of psyching you. You let aside your majesty. Gave up everything for me. Suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign forever and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. Listen. If you stop loving God because he didn't give you husband, you are a wicked person. Look at what he went through. And will he not give you prosperity or ministry? You see why God gets angry when men stop trusting him. He says you are ungrateful people. Look at what I did to you. Only because the breakthrough did not come. Now you are backsliding. That's why I love him with my life. Money or no money. Ministry or no ministry. He has already done too much. Too much. Listen, if God called one of the angels and gave him his image, he is still God. 
how many, look at how many times people fail God. And it's not like we went and we were repentant. He was the one chasing us and begging. This thing, this thing is still paining Satan till tomorrow. Why will God leave his throne? Let me tell you, when Satan saw Jesus becoming a baby, he knew that this was the height of, in quote, stupidity of God. Not only did God chase man through the prophets, now the word became flesh. Came and entered the womb of a woman, was patient for 30 years. Men insulted him. That's why he came to Jesus and said, I am concerned about your humiliation. Take the keys, just bow to me. And God said, no. That's why the Bible says, wherefore God so highly. God was so impressed by the humility of Jesus. Look at all the stars he created. Yet, he degraded. There are cadres in the realm of the spirit. He became lower than the seraphs. Lower than, that's why, see, to an extent, the Bible says, after his fasting and prayer, angels came and ministered to him. They were consoling their maker. What humility. So Satan is on a revenge mission. There is anger and annoyance. That's why he will not leave your family. That's why he will keep deceiving preachers to tell people everything is alright. Just shake your body and feel nice. Let me tell you the truth. Get out. I'm not saying be angry or criticize any man of God. <laughs> but the moment you do that, Satan starts taking a breath of fresh air and says, please continue. If you need money for this kind of ministry, I'll keep giving you money. That's why some people get money without praying. They think it's God that is giving it. Satan is saying, come at this level. If, it's, if money will make you not to pray, take the money. Stop praying. Just be enjoying the money. Let me continue dealing with other people. But there are some people that have determined money or no money, it can't stop our prayer. Every day we will shake the gates. Kapoto kata. They must hear this sound. We must register our presence. Prosperity or no prosperity. Whether my family needs help or not, it's a sign. I'm just letting Satan know. Hello, good morning. Ambassadors are still alive. Hey. Hallelujah. The second reason, listen, is because there is something called the written judgment. Judgment that has been written for Satan. I hope you know that. Nobody can pray it. We cannot gather now and say, God, forgive Satan, please. Uh -huh. It is written. Are you getting me now? So Satan believes. Listen. Satan knows he is going to the lake of fire. I hope you know that. He has deceived the demonic realm to believe that he will overthrow mankind. Listen. And except the army rise, it looks like it's possible. Because when you see the way Satan is possessing and oppressing families, it looks like there is no hope. So Satan keeps convincing the demons and say, if we continue, a day will come we will destroy mankind and God will do another strategy and this lake of fire agenda might be cancelled. Are you getting it now? Because for as long as the church does not rise, Jesus cannot come. I hope you know that. Yeah. The coming of Jesus is not a mystery. Please, don't. I have shown you. I have shown you. Jesus is not coming like a thief in the night to the church. Brothers and sisters. 1 Thessalonians 5. Please, very quickly. 1 Thessalonians 5. Let's just settle this in once and for all. I've told you. He's coming like a thief in the night. The Bible says that. The question is to who? Not to the church. How can he love us so much and come like a thief in the night to us? Who is he afraid of that is coming like a thief? Let's look at it. See, a lot of theology that we got, we believe them, we are convinced. Everybody, look up, I'll start reading. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. Verse 2. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh like a thief in the night. This is where many of our theologians stop. Is that true? But there is more. Read on. For when they, who are the they? Not us. 
when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape if you love God and you believe in his word read verse 4 one to go is it not in your bible is that not it he said but ye brethren he has spoken about they the foolish virgins who are outside now he's saying ye brethren you are not in darkness so why should it come in the night he says that that day should overtake you like a thief is it not the spirit and the bride that tells the world to come the world does not just come the spirit koinonia in partnership it is the church in partnership with the holy spirit who say we have conquered the systems king of kings come and behold the works of your bride and he will come and come and harvest a church without spot or wrinkle so it is because we are in the end times that god is releasing apostolic and prophetic graces to accelerate the advancement of the kingdom there are souls to be won a lot of people who are saying Jesus is coming, they don't have a passion for God. It is true, don't get me wrong. Jesus is really coming soon. Very, very soon. That's why he puts an urgency upon us. That's why we are launching things like Project 10,000 to make sure that we can push this gospel. That's why we are sending all our messages free. We don't have time to look for money right now. There is an urgency on the ground. Why do we do all of these things? If we are looking for a name, can't we just write books and be receiving royalties? We are smart enough to do research. All the messages we have preached, if we change it into books and just balance and be receiving royalty, at least one of them will be a bestseller. Don't you think so? So what puts this fire? What makes you leave your house and come and sit down? And other people do not understand. You are a savior to them. And they are now criticizing you. Don't be afraid. You are the savior that will arise. Whenever people talk and say, You said, don't know. Uh, you have the, another spirit. It's the spirit of Christ. Don't just come because you want a husband. Or because you want a wife. We, we dedicate miracle service for that. But there is an urgency. There is a curriculum of the spirit we must cover on time. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, Satan hates this meeting beyond your imagination. Never make mistakes. If you see people coming like this, it is because he cannot stop them. It's not that he doesn't want to. He cannot. Because keys have been given to us. And our job is to threaten him. I, my life's goal, among the numerous goal, is to give Satan heart attack. Before Jesus comes to take me home. I'm not sure I may die before he comes. Because he's coming really soon. Hallelujah. When we do everything, we salute the earth and check out. And say, Toh, we have tried. Those who didn't listen to us, I'm leaving my Bible. You can get it in Zaria. And we'll check out. We will. In case all you are doing is amassing wealth and amassing everything. If it is not for the kingdom, I have a root shock for you. You may not live to enjoy it because we will be going. That's when you will see the vanity of life. So the Bible says, lay for yourself treasures in heaven. Why are you? I'm not against a life of comfort. Hallelujah. But let your concentration be on the things of God. So Satan deceives us. Husband and wife, I'm not against marriage again. And all of these things. Oh job, I don't have a job. God, I will backslide. And God is saying, after all I've done, oh yeah, backslide. Now is your own fault. And the devil is saying, please, go ahead, backslide. I will supply you the grace, the bad friends, all the arsenals you need to quickly backslide. That's why you can download any junk in the internet free of charge. Because the devil wants to accelerate your backsliding. And then, we the men of God, Satan keeps making us sleep. And all that we are concerned doing is criticizing people and saying what God didn't call us to do. Hallelujah. Whereas we should concentrate on building the kingdom. 
we are here arguing about frivolities, arguing about is it right to wear kaftan on stage or is it right to wear this, all of those things. The devil is saying, continue, I beg you. Any opportunity to distract the church, the devil is saying, this is what I want. So the man of God now has a lot of money. They give him a lot of jeep. He said, my soul, fine rest. No prayer, no study, no anything. And the person is happy. And he says, I, I run a ministry of so, so, so number of people and uh, I'm very fulfilled. The devil said, thank you. More of this. More of this. But when Satan finds people who, when God blesses them, it doesn't change it. The devil says, how do we throw these people down? See, the devil is thinking, of, while you are sleeping, he's not sleeping. They are just meeting and saying, for God's sake, how are we going to put Aaron down? As in the middle of the discussion, then you wake up. Kapota kabaya da baba. You just felt like ventilating your spirit by one o'clock in the night. Reketekete. Abata katobariata. Rakataba. And you are shaking the khakis, meaning it does not matter. The khakis didn't change anything. Rise up on your feet. Let's close. Come on, let's begin to pray in the spirit. We have a passion to see his kingdom come. Pray. Say Lord to see your kingdom come. It's my desire to be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Your prayer is an eternal investment for yourself. For your family, for your church. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Three prayer points, and we're out of here. Number one. It's a prayer of gratitude. You're going to say, Lord, I never saw your love in this light. Now I know you care about me. How can I kill myself? Suicide? What for? Rekete koto braka. Say Lord, I thank you for your love. So protect Thank you for your love. In spite of myself, in spite of my limitations, in spite of my shortcomings, thank you, thank you for loving me enough to seek me. Oh yes, thank you because you are not a man. Thank you because you are not a religious person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to say, Lord, I receive grace to contribute in whatever way that will show you that I love you and I'm interested in your agenda. Whatever way, by casting out devils, by financing the kingdom, by getting men saved, by getting them filled with the Holy Ghost, by praying for preachers, by praying for pastors, by not gossiping about people, whatever contribution, no matter how little, I receive grace, 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 Grace to pray for men of God. Grace to sow into their lives. Grace to sow into the kingdom. Whether it's to get men filled with the Holy Ghost, whether it's to produce Christ, whatever contribution of God, I receive grace. Hallelujah. Listen. Brothers and sisters, can I tell you something? Look at me. Do you know how desperate Jesus is to see his kingdom come? To see souls saved? No matter how little you contribute, 
you will hear him telling you thank you i know not everybody is interested you're going to pray and say every demonic hold that attempts to shift me away from the things of god lukewarm spirit bad friends bad associations be far from my life open your mouth and pray should I not put a gospel ringtone? Why should I put junk music in my phone? Why should I be afraid to wear a shirt that says I'm a kingdom addict? Why should I be ashamed to preach Jesus Christ? Because the lady is fine? Or because the guy is handsome? Or I don't want to be embarrassed? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please take it down again. Hallelujah. Next week I'm going to teach you a song. This song came while I was in Kaduna. Uh, yeah. You gave your everything. I give my everything. You gave your everything. So I give my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. This is a simple song. You have my everything. You have my everything. Lord, you have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Let's try one more time. You have my everything. 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 You have my Take all of me. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Hallelujah. I'm going to make an altar call right now. Everybody, please stand if you're sitting stand except if you're kneeling as we sing this song you know that you have never made a decision for the lord jesus christ i don't care who you are this is a serious business please we are not playing or if you've given your heart to the lord but you found yourself derailing jesus welcomes you tonight we want to recruit you as a matter of urgency so that you can participate in this building there is an urgency christ is coming there is an army that must be raised 
Brothers and sisters, this is a program. This is an agenda that God is doing. There's no time to waste. Now is the time you will tell the world goodbye. You will tell the flesh goodbye. And you will make a real decision. So as I lift up my voice and as we sing this song, I want you inside and outside. No matter how far you have been away from God, no man condemns you. Only men condemn. God welcomes you. Come as you are. And God will make you a brand new person. Hallelujah. Now begin to come. God bless you. You have my everything. God bless you. Appreciate them. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. Take all. Keep coming. Keep coming. Inside and outside. Shame on the devil you tonight Because you are going to come Forget about your you friends Forget about your friends you Welcome to your place of destiny They call on me Call on me Lord you It doesn't matter how far you have gone they call It doesn't me. matter how you far me. You can start you tonight have You have my everything You have my everything You have my Those of you in front, I'd like you to lift your hands and begin to talk to the Lord. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Let it flow. It's an indication of genuine repentance. All of us in the congregation, go ahead. This is an agenda that is so key to God. Don't worry, just bring her. You can just bring her and keep her. Take all of me. Please pray for the people here. It's a mighty army. Take all of me. Take all of me, Lord. Hallelujah. All of you who are standing here, I'd like you to say after me from the depths of your heart. It's not a recitation of a poem. Don't let the devil condemn you. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what your way of life is. A new beginning starts for you. It's on account of your prophetic destiny. Don't be afraid. We are welcoming you. It's a mighty family. The Bible says weak men came to the cave of Adullam. And David made mighty men. We are not the ones who reject the things that God... No. No man can be a castaway. Hallelujah. I'd like you to say after me from the depths of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus... I love you with all my heart. I accept that I'm a sinner. Unable to help myself. But tonight, I have seen that you love me. I repent of my sins. I ask Jesus to come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. From today, I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. In the mighty name of Jesus I am a child of God I am a child of God Satan Take your hands off my life Take your hands off my family From today I move forward ever And backward never Let me pray for you Keep your hands lifted Father thank you Thank you Thank you for all the mighty people that you have brought we receive them with humility. Hallelujah. God bless you. Um, once again, we bring you great tidings in this wonderful new year, 2024. Uh, I want you to get your heart set because what the Lord is going to be doing is going to be marvelous. It's going to be splendid. Just as how the Shunammite woman prepared a place for God's servant, prophet Elisha. The Lord is certain that this year is going to be preparing a place for you, for your family. He's going to be preparing a place for all 
that concerns you um it's going to be so massive so mighty and it's going to reflect even to the neighborhood set your heart in order because what god is going to be doing in your life this year and through the mouth of his servants on this platform reflector hub tv it's going to be very very amazing indeed it's going to be an awesome wonders so get your heart set and stay tuned stay connected as the word of the lord comes to you mightily god bless you Kepada kata pronda skabana embreke teka to basele da bos lekata pratos kepada katos zekete kete 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 embrakatos ko de breketea in the name of Jesus restoration by the god of wonders restoration in the name of Jesus and the fortunes of job were restored to him the fortunes of job were restored to him declare speed over your life Lord give me speed give me speed give me speed Hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord Two more prayers Ah Kalibranda gatosiata Esther chapter 6 Esther chapter 6 something is about to happen to someone Esther chapter 6 from verse 1 Please give it to us On that night could not the king sleep and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king verse 2 and it was found written that Mordecai that Joshua Selman had done something before and had not been rewarded that night it was recorded in heaven that you have been faithfully serving as a pastor but your reward is yet to come it was recorded in heaven that you served your boss or your master faithfully isn't it amazing that sometimes you can serve sincerely and men can forget joseph served the wine presser when he got to the palace he forgot him for two years he added two years of pain men can forget but god remembers keep that scripture there the bible says Two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, they sought to slay the king. Verse 3. The king said, What honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Listen to me. There are times in our lives where we give our best. Some of us have served people for years. Some of us raised many children. They are in privileged positions today. And by some kind of demonic thing the devil turned their minds and their hearts some of them are our own biological children there are people that walk the length and the breadth of this city and you will hear their story that they raise people there are lecturers that raise senators today raise people but it looks like no one is remembering them something is about to happen are you ready the bible says what honor and what dignity had been done for Mordecai then the king's servant that ministered to him said there is nothing that has been done i hope you know it was not only mordecai whose acts were recorded there but when god is ready to lift you he will single you out you are about to pray say after me in the name of jesus father i declare that the book of remembrance be opened over me my family my destiny and every reward you have preordained i command it to appear in my life lift your voice and begin to pray father for the things that i have done for your kingdom i gave to the work of the lord for the things that i have done for your kingdom let a book of remembrance be open please pray let the book of remembrance be open listen to me God is almighty but the way he lifts men and the way he honors men and the way he shows up for men is through the ministry of men listen carefully God is almighty but he has so chosen according to his predetermined counsel that he will need a man to help lift men we are going to pray and provoke 
by the God of wonders, the ministry of destiny help us. Listen to me. There's no time, but there are four dimensions of destiny help us. That if they do not show up in your life, believe me, you will never rise. Not in this life. I assure you. I wish I had time, I would have shown you from scripture. But very quickly, number one, the first kind or type of persons destiny helpers that must show up in your life they are called divine connectors i trust that god will grant us another platform to explain them in detail divine connectors do not have what you need but they know who has it and they can connect you to that person an example was the slave girl she did not have the ability to heal but if the king did not pay at, if Naaman, the Bible says Naaman in 2 Kings 5 was the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in war, but he was leprous. And yet in his house, there was a little slave girl who had the power to link him to the anointing that will set him free. The key to receiving from destiny helpers is discernment because they will come in a fashion that is not easily acceptable. You must trust God for discernment. Someone can be selling a newspaper in a park and that newspaper can carry the advert for your job. You need to discern that this guy was a newspaper seller but there is an angel moving him to me. You need discernment. Number two, very quickly, you need men of influence. There are times that you don't need divine connectors. You need the men of influence themselves. The protocol of lifting is that you have to be initiated by those who are there already. There are times you have the grace and the gift, but you don't have a voice yet at the palace. You will need someone who is already there to speak for you. Politicians understand this. Unbelievers understand this, but Christians do not understand this. Oh, Joseph, you can be gifted, but you will remain there until someone introduces you to the king and until the king sends for you. Even though you are called of God, you will still remain in the prison. Men of influence. You're a man of God here, please pray. No matter how anointed you are, you need these kinds of people. Men of influence, economic influence, sociological influence. We live in evil times where people can get up and take advantage of your limitation. Men of influence. Number three, you need gifted people. There are times you just need to get the job done. And it takes more than sincerity to get the job done. You need gifted people gifted people gifted people from the protocol to your worship team and everyone give is a grace i'm sharing it with you so that you covet it it does not just happen these graces are like magnets they call the people to come you don't look for them you won't find them if you find them they will come with a side effect the grace purifies it knows the kind of people that it calls to you gifted people there are corporations that waste money on so many people because they are not gifted. They are loyal, but they are not gifted. The last group of destiny helpers you need are burden bearers. No matter who you are, times will come in your life where you don't just need gifted people. You don't need men of influence. You need people who can cry with you. People like Naomi was to Ruth. I mean like Ruth was to Naomi. You need people who need more than your talent. You need people who, who want more than... I'm telling you, what betides a man who does not find a help and a support at your downtimes? Not everybody is self-centered. Not everybody is selfish. There are people who genuinely love you and they will not only rise with you, they will die with you. You need to pray those kinds of people. We're about to pray it now. Because you see, the pandemic has almost reset everything again. And you will need this group of people to lift you fast. So while the divine connectors are speaking to you about speaking to people about what you carry the men of influence are using their track record and their, their credibility to stabilize your stay gifted people are there making things happen and burden bearers are there they are the intercessors they are the people who are not looking for your gifts at all they are there to protect you if these four sets of people show up in your life there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to keep you are you ready to pray so that when you call forth destiny help us that the god of wonder should show up for you first that god will make you one of such kind of people first you can't pray for something that you are not willing to give to 
make me a divine connector make me a person of influence a gifted person and more importantly a burden bearer and then you can now pray it are we together listen as some of you are praying this prayer can i tell you this whilst god is sending your own help god will be revealing to you what you are and to who you are god can be speaking to you and say from today whilst you are praying you become a burden bearer listen make sure that whilst we are praying you are discerning discerning ministry becomes hard without these combinations there are people who have that grace but there are blessed people all around the city but the spirit of grace has not apportioned them to someone can i tell you this truly speaking there are no greedy people the word greed is a relative word because someone who will refuse to bless you will pursue another person and say take it depends on the grace that is on your head are you ready to pray say father in the name of jesus i decree and declare that i receive the ministry of destiny help us lift your voice and begin to mention them please call them to your life you are a worker a member in this church call them in greater measures in this church i call divine connectors show up in my life i call men of influence appear in the name of jesus i call on gifted people show up in the name of jesus i call on burden bearers show up in the name of jesus are you praying hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord now listen i'm about to spend the time i have left i know that many of us have come with hunger you're going to pray and ask the lord to give you an encounter within these minutes to visit you can i tell you this sincerely i admit to you that every challenge is relative is relative to the grace that confronts it an age-long captivity can melt overnight i'm hearing a horn really sincerely sir i'm hearing like a horn like a shofar blowing this is what i'm hearing in my spirit and you see in the bible every time a shofar blows is announcing a new season I'm, I'm telling you this believe what i'm saying this is a prophetic word i stand by the spirit of grace and i'm telling you that a new season a new season the bible says for us to minister according to the measure of grace i'm hearing a horn it's a new season a season of signs a season of wonders a season of visibility even by the spirit of grace I'm about to pray there are some of you who are trusting God for infirmities in your body you see I hope you don't mistake in what I'm doing for pride this is an election of grace is the privilege of God's grace sir would you be embarrassed if I talk to you I'm seeing a door that has been closed for the last 10 years being opened again to you this is what I'm seeing. A door. What do you have to do with music? I'm seeing a door. This was closed by witchcraft for over 10 years. And the Lord is saying here, I'm opening it again. This is what I'm seeing. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life must change. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Celebrate the God of wonders. Mighty things are about to happen here. Prophesy to yourself now. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace, my life is changed. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace, my life has changed. Hallelujah. Who is God?
grace grace come in the name of jesus i shift you into a new dimension in the spirit are you married are you married where's your husband at home where is home in abuja here tell your husband the month of march is a month of breakthrough for you both of you god is about i'm seeing this man cry there has been help her please there has been constraints but god himself is giving you a visitation even by the spirit of god listen i prophesy to you i don't care what it is that has held you down i stand by the god of heaven here in the name of jesus every obstacle that stands between you and the next level i clear it out of the way in the name of jesus i clear it out of the way i'm hearing a name martha martha please help me guys volume give. martha who is martha i'm hearing a name martha we have to be very very fast martha this is the name that the lord is giving me i want to pray for that person right now that every plague of darkness every plague of darkness are we together so we are not teaching some cunningly devised fables or some acts of the flesh no we are people who by the grace of god i assure you that if he's the god of heaven you will be surprised i'm about to pray a very serious prayer there are people today as it is there is nothing in your hand but i give you one month from today by the god that i serve honestly if god be god you will marvel and wonder at what happens a month from now you will stand on this altar in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray a prayer and i want you to bring those people out there is a grace that god wants to reveal in this meeting exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 please give it to us and then we pray exodus chapter 3 let your hearts be open please be prayerful don't be distracted help us media please read with me if you can see ready read and i will give joshua selman favor in the sight of the egyptians and the proof is that it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty i want to pray there is a grace that is coming upon people and this grace is for strange dimensions of favor god wants to shift people some of you are representing businesses and families are we together now in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare help me with the symbol please please can you just teach him let him know what to do in the name of jesus right now i declare father even as you have revealed to me i'm seeing the number 28 28 people the hand of god is coming upon them you are drinking of that grace for favor some of you is in answer to the prayers of your loved ones they prayed for a long time that god should bring them into that dimension right now in the name of jesus and at the count of three may that grace come upon you now one two three take that grace take that grace take that grace bring them out take that grace help them please please whether you are an usher or not my goodness my goodness please help them take that grace in the name of jesus we release favor we release favor we release favor open your mouth and begin to pray as they come out open your mouth begin to decree favor in the name of jesus please bring them out favor kali katos kebrende kata favor by the supernatural hand of god bring them out we're praying kela porando sadikata brahaska dibaria take a brand bakata now i don't know how i'm going to pray this prayer please this is the prayer that will i will plead with you to be your brother's keeper because i'm about to release the grace for speed oh yes sir there is a real grace for speed and when i pray that grace the power of god will come on people and some of them will begin to run that's why i'm saying you have to be your brother's keeper so that we don't make this place rowdy lift your hands father in the name of jesus i want you to bring those people out there are men and women 
there are destinies and families that must plunge into this grace for speed god of wonders i pray that at the count of three may that mantle and that grace come upon people are you ready now one two three take that grace take that grace speed please help them help them speed speed to your life speed to your destiny help this man please hallelujah that every planting that is not of the lord over the life and the family of anyone it must give way now lift your hands father in the name of jesus i stand by the god of heaven and i decree and declare right now at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus and as you shout that name loud inside and outside online every force of darkness capacitor tying anyone's destiny down that has found that you will not rise is about to let you go now are you ready now one two three shout jesus right now i command those powers be gone right now release your destinies now bring them out please release your destinies right now in the name of jesus christ i set on fire every altar that is not of god yokes of darkness i declare be released now please bring them out be released now by the fire of the holy ghost be released right now i'm seeing a, a there is a grace that is coming on women i'm seeing chains people who have been bound i stretch my hands i'm seeing the number 13 i don't know where you are but right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus at the count of three may that fire come upon you please bring them out one two three take that fire right now take that fire every altar of darkness tying your destiny it must let you go now it must let you go now hold mama carefully bring out now listen you are standing you are standing for families there are some of you listen to me you are not just please don't come out at random those under the anointing just bring those under the anointing in the name of jesus christ there are families here that are under all kinds of yokes my goodness i'm telling you i'm just seeing like 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 light just coming on people i'm stretching my hands right now please help me help this guy let him know what to do huh in the name of jesus christ at the count of three there is such massive deliverance going on right now one two three take that grace right now the chains that have held you down there are people who cannot move forward you've been in abuja for years and it looks like there are forces holding you down i declare be released now be released now be released now by the power of the holy ghost bring them out be released now in the name of jesus blessing blessing who is blessing i'm hearing the name blessing you are wearing black with a black face mask all black all black is there someone like that blessing it's time for your life to change i stretch my hands right now change in the name of jesus christ by the spirit of grace bring them out fire is burning in this place in the name of jesus fire is burning in this place i set every altar please connect please connect be serious i set every altar all of you who are in front here the spirits that oppress you at the count of three go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies in the name of jesus christ
hallelujah i'm seeing the mantle for the prophetic i'm seeing the number 14 please just give me strings it's going to come on 14 people i'm seeing some of you have prayed some of you have fasted you have seen it in dreams and visions the prophetic is real i know that there are abuses and the rest but please don't confuse that there are people who can step into this grace i want to stretch my hands father I do not know where they are across the length and the breadth of this auditorium but there are people you are preordained to be in this meeting that must drink of this wine my god i'm seeing an eagle there it goes in the name of jesus at the count of three may that grace and that man to fall like a tornado upon your life are you ready one two three take that grace help them help them help that gentleman i activate that prophetic the eyes that see the ears that hear help this pastor my goodness in the name of jesus step into levels of fire in the name of jesus step into levels of fire bring them out drink of that prophetic well spring up all wells in the name of jesus hear me in this season the borders are rising there are women of power women of grace i'm about to release that grace where are the borders share the word of the lord i bring a clarion call by the spirit at the count of three may that man to locate you right now one two three take that grace fire upon your life fire upon your ministry fire upon the borders fire upon the borders fire take that grace two of you this this pastor take that grace take that grace you and your wife take that grace in the name of jesus the spirit of the lord is saying i'm revealing my glory in a new dimension your eyes will see it i'm revealing my glory in a new dimension your eyes will see it i'm still i don't know why god is still saying to speak over women there are people you are returning back to the realm of prophetic dreams where you will see things before they happen i stretch my hands take that grace right now 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 hallelujah madam this woman with green yes lift your hands is are you husband and wife sir lift your hands both of you i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on both of you i'm stretching my hands take that grace both of you in the name of jesus the christ of god drink of this grace step into new dimensions in the spirit help them in the name of jesus you will never be the same never be the same never be the same never be the same by the spirit of the living god now hear me every door that has refused to open in the name of jesus i'm praying for you now for as long as it is a door standing before you mateus kani parahasia and it has refused to open i come by the rod of a higher priesthood and in the name of jesus i speak to that door Ephata, be open hither and tither Ephata, be open hither and tither open your mouth and begin to pray declare that door opens the door of my influence the door of grace are you praying open your mouth and begin to pray hallelujah hallelujah i decree and declare grace upon your prayer life 
in the name of jesus ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them i pray that spiritual ignorance dries up from your life in the name of jesus i declare colossians 1 verse 9 upon your life that you'll be filled with the knowledge of his will you'll be filled with all wisdom and you'll be filled with spiritual understanding in the name of jesus christ the bible says and i will restore the years everything you have lost in time please believe this one i stand again in agreement and we declare over you and over the nations in the name of jesus the grace that brings restoration drink of that grace drink of that grace supernatural restoration in the name of jesus christ i pray for every man woman of god here present and those connecting online that you desire in your life you desire in your ministry i stand in faith and i declare that grace comes upon you now that grace comes upon you now that grace begins to speak over your life in the mighty name of jesus all those in politics and government i decree and declare by the spirit of god we separate you and we declare step into new levels of achievement in the name of jesus i speak over captains of industry hear the word of the lord i decree and declare that in this season where many are saying there is a casting down for you hear your prophecy let there be a rising up in the name of jesus it was james in chapter 2 and verse 26 who declared that for a spirit without a body without a spirit is dead your business is only a body there is a spirit that must give it life i declare the spirit that powers the bodies the vessels the projects the businesses that excel in the name of jesus christ may that grace rest upon you Can we declare over your finances there are different levels of wealth and the prophetic dimension comes as an advantage a system of advantage in this kingdom you have your products and your services that you offer and that's wonderful you have your value that you provide but much more than that there has to be a supernatural backing that pushes you forward are we together now it says there were many widows in zarephath but to none was elijah sent in the name of jesus i stand again with the angels over this house and i declare over your finances in a very strange way for the bible declares believe the lord your god so shall you be established it says believe his prophet so shall you prosper step into strange seasons of abundance seasons of opportunity seasons of abundance in the name of jesus if there is anyone here that the spirit of death is hovering around you hovering around your family please hear this because we are we live in seasons where someone can just say headache my head my head and just fall down and die someone shout no way in the name of jesus i speak over your life i declare that anyone here who is being appointed unto death by reason of the death passes over you in the name of jesus christ you will not be a victim of kidnapping you will not be a victim of accident you will not be a victim of plane crash you will not be a victim of the wickedness of men a thousand shall fall by your side ten thousand by your right side we prophesy that none will harm you with your eyes will you see and behold the reward of the wicked may this be your heritage in the name of jesus let me pray for families here psalm 112 it says blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed shall be mighty upon earth then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed that wealth and riches will be in his house and yet his righteousness endures forever i declare we pray for our children may they be mighty in the name of jesus listen this spirit in africa that makes children even though grown 
that they have to depend on parents to still feed them in old age we stand by the grace of god every young person here who is 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 responsible and should be employed or should be engaged i declare we push you by prophecy in the name of jesus christ i pray for those who are in the music ministry in the name of jesus i use this wonderful man of god who ministered what an amazing vessel you are in the name that is above all names i declare i use him as a point of where's the gentleman he's not here in the name of jesus christ may god bless you my dear one you will step into unprecedented dimensions of grace in the name of jesus and i use him as a point of contact anyone here who is in the music ministry genuine worshiper and you've not gained the kind of visibility that allows you to be a blessing and to be rewarded in the name of jesus we tear the veil and we announce you i release a hear ye him anointing upon you in the name of jesus find visibility we multiply your influence by the spirit in the name of jesus let me pray a prayer that god is putting in my heart i hope you don't see it as carnal there are people here the grace for territory is not yet on you you've been in this city for a long time but it looks like you have not gotten your own place i want to shift you by prophecy standing in partnership with the man of god you should not be in this city for long in a place of good and abundance and your portion has not been given to you and they dug a well and the philistines covered it they dug another one they covered it then they dug the third one and they left them they called it rehoboth he said god has given me my own space i prophesy to someone in the name that is above all names between now and the end of this year have your own space i give you your own portion in this city in this land in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i want you to pray and knock on the door of heaven your heart is already right with god i know that but i want you to agree with god and say lord between now can you give me a reason to praise your name this year i tell you if you if you obey this instruction and pray with your heart you will be surprised what my God will do. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, I agree with you. Shapata. Open strange doors. Open strange doors. Open strange doors. Open strange doors. Ay, 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 ay. Open strange doors. Open strange doors. Open strange doors. Do it for your glory. Surprise my father. Surprise my mother. Surprise them. I intercede for them. May the angel of your presence reach them. Give them a miracle. Let that cancer be healed. Let that HIV be healed. Let that barrenness be broken. Let her take in. Having a child already in a womb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone shout it self time in the name of Jesus. I decree that every force in the heavenlies programmed a sign to stop results from manifesting in my life to discourage my Christian life I challenge you by the blood of Jesus lift your voice and pray ancestral powers yokes spirits ordinances written in the heavenlies projected by witchcraft and wickedness to stop my life 
from glorifying God to stop results from happening in my life. I challenge you. I challenge you. I challenge you by the blood of the eternal covenant. Hallelujah. Let's take one more prayer point. I want us to release the ministry of angels. Listen. The Bible says, are they not ministering spirits? Let me tell you, hear me. Angels are real. I see them all the time. You will be foolish to believe angels are not real. Not everybody here seated physically in Koinonia is a human being. I have seen them many times as I preach. They sit down like human beings. They are not human beings. I like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. See, some of you are still joking. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I am an heir of salvation. Therefore, I decree and I deploy the ministry of angels to every area of my life to war a warfare until I become victorious lift your voice and pray I release their ministry release my helpers to come into my destiny release favor I release angels over Koinonia the angels assigned over Koinonia we release you by the word of God the angels assigned over God's people we release you we release you we release you we release you in the name of Jesus bring miracles bring signs bring wonders hallelujah we're out of time but let's pray the Holy Ghost is asking me that we challenge the spirit of fear look at me listen let me tell you something about the spirit of fear I tell you fire is burning in this place listen fear is a dangerous spirit it stops you from taking God seriously when God speaks fear exposes you to the obvious limitations it's not that they are not there the obstacles are there but God's word does not explain it creates God will not tell you how by next week you will be holding a million in your hand don't be stupid and say God how will it happen who do I know blessed is she that believes he said for unto her there shall be a performance fear of death listen fear of failure fear of not having the money to feed yourself do you know it's fear that make people do all kinds of foolish things you are afraid before you know it you sell your phone because you want 10,000 in your pocket the 10,000 finishes you sell your trouser people sell all kinds of things people have converted and have left God because of fear in the name of Jesus I challenge the spirit of fear over my life over my family over my loved ones over koinonia i declare in the name of jesus you are banished from my life forever lift your voice and pray there's no fear there's no fear i refuse to fear say unto the righteous it shall be well say unto the righteous koinonia you pray tonight don't look around pray say unto the righteous it shall be well say unto the righteous it shall be well fear of marriage fear of children fear of 
terrorism. after me in the name of Jesus father every prophecy you spoke over my life that has not happened I want you to know that I still believe you and I agree with you I must receive that testimony lift your voice and pray I wrestle with prophecy I agree I agree you said you will heal my father I still believe you said you will heal my mother I still believe you said you will prosper my business prosper my ministry I still believe lift your hands I want to pray for you I'm a believer I'm a believer when you dare to believe God and understand what it takes to get the results you need I pray for you in the name that is above all names first and foremost even as you have prayed I challenge every force of witchcraft that has been released over Nigeria released over states to frustrate believers and make it look like God's word is not working I command that power to bow in the name of Jesus I command that power to bow in the name of Jesus number two I pray for you the kind of speed that you have not seen from Je I ask the God that I serve to give you that speed in the name of Jesus that he will perform his word hastily hastily in the name of Jesus number three I pray for you with all my heart every secret you have been looking at but you have never really understood you look at it all the time but you are you listen to the messages help them please but you have not gotten it i speak upon your spirit may an unction the unction that teaches men things i'm, I'm doing an impartation upon your spirit i pray for you in the name of jesus may that light shine upon your spirit May that light, that illumination shine upon your spirit. Any man on earth who is holding your answer, any physical man holding your answer, I put pressure upon their spirit. They must answer you. They must answer your parents. They must answer your loved ones. I pray for you for every miracle we have received as a ministry this year whether it is in finances whether it is in increase whether it is in influence and impact I pray for you from the depth of my heart beginning from this night I don't care how short the time is I decree and I ask the Lord most high to reproduce that testimony in your life May he reproduce that testimony in your life. Anyone here, hold on please, who is sick in any part of your body, any nonsense the devil has planted, whether you call it fibroid, whether you call it menstrual pain, whether you say barrenness, impotency, whether you call it migraine, SS, AS, bad dreams, witchcraft any kind of sickness 
right now as i stand here in the name that is above all names may the fire of the holy ghost surge through your body and clear that devil out of your life may the fire of the holy ghost surge through help them please may the fire of the holy ghost my god i tell you i see fire falling on people that's what i see in the spirit fire people are getting healed May the fire of the Holy Ghost search through your body and clear that devil right now. May the fire of the Holy Ghost, I say it again, standing upon this place, may the fire of the Holy Ghost search through your body and clean your blood and cleanse your life. Anyone here called SS, AS, I command that genotype change now. Any stranger you were not born with, if you were not born with it, breast lump, fibroid, ovarian cyst, any devil sitting on your body, your body must glorify God tonight. Therefore, I curse that devil. I curse that spirit. I curse that devil. I curse that spirit. Everything that has stopped you from being productive, I prophesy to your hands. Your hands represent they are symbolic of your productivity when the hands of samson were tied he could not do anything i pray for these hands may god teach you the mystery of profiting in the name of jesus he said i am the lord that teacheth thy hands to profit and leadest thou in the way that thou should go may god show you the mysteries may he show you in the name of jesus Everything representing shame and reproach in your life and that of your family. It comes to end this night in the name of Jesus. I pray for your spiritual life. The kind of encounter that you have not had from January till now. Strange encounters, revelations of heaven. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, every wall that stands before you and the next dimension, I decree and declare by the spirit of grace that was upon the nation of Israel standing before Jericho, I command every wall, go down flat go down flat financial walls go down flat career walls go down flat in the name of Jesus and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon every man that must send for you to come out from where you are to where you need to go to the gatekeepers of the dimensions that you seek to enter I compel favor from them to you I compel favor from them to you in the name of Jesus There are angels that herald the influence of a man. Listen, honor is a grace. When that grace is not upon you, no matter how noble you are, you will never be honored. Honor is a grace. And when that grace is on you, only God can take it away. It says, and Jabez was more honorable than his, not more prosperous not more favored more honorable 
Many people do not know what honor is. The fortitude for preference. There is an unction from God that fishes you out of the crowd, places you in a position where the eyes of men must discern you, reward you, recognize that which God has invested within you. Listen to me. There are many gifted people. The eye that can bless has not seen you. There are many men of God. The eyes that can discern and lift you is not there. Let me pray for you. There is a grace for honor. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may the mantle that makes for honor, territorial honor, honor at a national level, in the name of Jesus, receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. You will be surprised to see the workings of this grace in your life. When the grace for honor and favor is upon you, you will always be found in the midst of your destiny helpers. Listen, it's a mystery that cannot be explained. You will be suspended until they appear. Then you come. Listen, it's a waste to fight battles without reward. David said, what shall be given to the man that will do this to Goliath? Sometimes it's a waste to do noble things in the face and the presence of people who have no fortitude to discern and to reward. I pray for you. May the Lord position your destiny help us and cause them to love you and to honor you. The Lord asked me to wear this as a prophetic representation of what he is still doing. It is still a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I stand by the God of heaven. Have the faith to believe. Don't sit down questioning, leave your mind and trust God. It is within his power to make great. He takes a man from the dunghill overnight and turns his life around. I'm praying for you. For some of you before this year is over, step into a dimension of prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. Prepared parushalata. I release you into a dimension of prepared blessing. Listen, believers, I want you to believe this. Do not doubt what the power of God can do. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the grace that will produce results of wonders in your life, may that grace rest upon you now. Prepared blessings that take you to realms. Ten years put in one month, I release that grace upon you. Listen, these graces are not some carnal show of wealth. No, they are time redemption systems. Understand what they are. They seek to conquer time and give you the convenience and the allowance to serve the purposes of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, the grace for ease that brings you into supernatural results. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I pray for every family represented here. The sound of mourning, the sound of pain and anguish by the Spirit of the living God, let it come to an end this night. Everything 
anything that has refused to work in your life by the power of the highest I compel it to begin to work now men you do not know may they carry glad tidings about you to the ears of your helpers in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the presence of God the weightiness the substance of his presence that must rest upon you especially if you are in ministry by the power of the Holy Ghost be a career of divine presence in the name of Jesus everyone here trusting God for a job before this year runs out may God give you a miracle job Every family here trusting the Lord for any and every kind of breakthrough. We call upon the God of the heavens. In the name of Jesus, let there be an, a, an abundant supply of that grace. Hear me. Whoever ignores you will pay for it. Hear me. Any man that fights you goes down instantly. Let me say it again. Any man that fights you goes down instantly. I pray for every ministry here under the sound of my voice. The grace and the wings of the spirit that will take you to dimensions untold. May that grace rest upon you. I pray for every man and every woman of God here. The errands and the horse that will hold your hands. Loyal men indeed. May God give them to you. Anyone here who the testimony over your life is Ichabod. I declare by the spirit of God a restoration happens now. shall not be afraid of the snare of the fowler nor the noisome pestilence nor the destruction that wasted in noonday says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side it says none shall hurt you but with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked I pray for you as a bird is escaped from the snare of the fowler may you escape from every evil May you escape from every trap. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over your life. Go from glory to glory. If you speak over your prayer life, over your word study life, whatever has stolen your joy, whatever has stolen your fire, whatever has stolen your passion, whatever has stolen your focus, in the name of Jesus, by fire, let it be restored.